Get your Universal Monsters Horror figures at Big Bad Toy Store at the link in the description. Horror, Kaiju, Dragon Ball, and more. Steven's Toy Reviews. Hey there, collectors. It is Steven here, and welcome to another horror figure review. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the black and white version of NECA's Ultimate Frankenstein's Monster. I'm going to be alternating between the two of them. You know who it is. You love them, or maybe you don't. But if you don't, I don't know why you're here. But today, black and white version of Frankenstein, and you already saw the review for my colored version, and if you didn't, card popping up in the top right hand corner of the screen. And if you're debating between the two of them, here's what I'm going to go ahead and say right off the top. It's not so much that they took one figure and added actual paint apps to it to liven it up with colors or the other one. They just did that, but black and white. No, 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 no. They actually changed up some of the details on this one. And quite frankly, it does feel like a legitimate figure in its own right. So do you want to get this one in addition to the colored one? Are you thinking one over the other? Or maybe you just want to take a look at some more Frankenstein? Well, let's take a look to see whether or not this guy here is worth adding into your collection. Interestingly enough, the black and white version of Frankenstein was the first thing that NECA proper had announced when they acquired uh, the Universal Monsters license in for everything that they're going to do. And this was the second release that they had because the colored version of Frankenstein was the first one released. Now, initially I was thinking, ooh, I kind of still want to stay with the black and white version. However, I did get the colored version. I do like that one a bit more. The black and white version, however, does have some respect commanded in its own right. So if you are interested in picking up the black and white version, I will say, don't think that it's just going to be the colored version, but black and white. There are going to be some details that have changed, such as silver paint apps turning into pretty much completely white. There are going to be changes in paint applications overall, such as lack of blood or grayscale blood in some areas. Small things like that to really keep in mind. So we are taking a look close up at Frankenstein here, which, hey, he does look pretty good. And to be honest, I do think he looks a bit more intimidating in black and white. One thing that I will note is that NECA does utilize the dot matrix, the face printing technology here for Frankenstein across all the alternate head sculpts. So that is very good. And as you can see, if you did compare this to my colored version, Again, changes to the blood application, changes to the shading, changes everywhere. The bolts on the neck, not just a shiny gray, if you will. They're white on the head there. Mm -hmm, that's white. That's not silver. And then as we take a look throughout the rest of the figure, you're going to notice on the right hand that mark there, that's just white paint. There's no nuance to it with little blood marks and so forth. That may just be different shades of gray. It's just straightforward a mark. On the left arm, we do have the brace that's there and everything, but guess what? No nuances for blood. It's just kind of there. So there are changes that some folks may like, some folks may not. But I will say, in its own right, again, the black and white version of Frankenstein really does stand out from the other release. All right, you've probably seen the review that I did of the colored version. Um, I just finished up. <laughs> so the articulation for the black and white version of Frankenstein is going to be identical uh, because it's the same sculpt. They just changed up a couple things. But of course, let's go over everything. So Frankenstein's head plugs in on a barbell style ball joint or double axis ball joint. So ball joint, ball joint, right? So that's good. That's how you change out the head sculpts. So plug that back in. And what's really cool is that changing... Uh, Hopefully, for the future of all NECA figures, uh, the actual neck plugs in on a ball joint into the torso. So look at that. Look at that. That's good. Look, you can look up that far, down that far. Do the Michael do the Michael Myers head tilt. Hello, Halloween kills. Let's do it. All right. So shoulders swivel hinge. So they swivel up and they spin around and then hinge up so he can T-pose kind of like that. T-Pose and Frankenstein, where you at? There you go. Okay. Um, do take note that because of his overall jacket, um, it does kind of go up in a little bit of a V. So we don't necessarily have V cut, but it does kind of block the range of movement just a little bit. Frankenstein is using single elbow hinges. That's the extent of the range of movement. And we do have swivels as well. Uh, no double elbow hinges. Not quite sure why. Maybe because of um, some other figures not looking good with double hinges. And maybe that's why they're sort of regressing, if you will. But it is what it is. 
wrists, all the hands plug in on pegs so they do swivel around, and then they do have hinges so we can bend them forward and back. Frankenstein is rocking a single ball joint in the waist, so we can move him around like so. And then NECA is utilizing ball jointed hips, as you can see here. So Frankenstein can kick about that far forward and back, right? And then side to side, you can do the splits just like that. We do have five swivels, which is good. Single hinge knees, booty. Now for the ankles, which are surprisingly really good, um, that far forward, and you can point his toe down thanks to a hinge. But what's really cool is that uh, I want to do it with this one. We can get Toku Frankie. So if you wanted to get Frankenstein using like the Specium Ray, oh, you can do that in a real weird way. So yeah, there you go. Frankenstein's articulation, it's regressing a little bit from what NECA has done with single hinges here and there. But then they added some new engineering. That, the neck in the torso ball joint, that's entirely new. So kudos, keep doing that. Um, so yeah, overall, I think Frankenstein moves just fine enough. Time to talk about accessories, and just like the colored version, it's going to have the exact same accessories. We are going to get two alternate head sculpts. We are going to get the chains, the shackles, the handcuffs, whatever you would prefer to call it, two sets of alternate hands, and some flower parts. So here's a look at the alternate head sculpts, which once again, I do think that these head sculpts are a bit more comical than they are scary. We do have one where uh, Frankenstein found the, um, <clears throat> the good stuff, and the other one where, again, I guess depending on the light, either he's um, trying to conceal, you know, a wet one flying loose, or uh, maybe if he gets some shadow on those eyes, maybe he does look rather intimidating. But quite frankly, I do think that these head sculpts don't really capture terror and, I guess, horror and hauntingness. Not, I don't really think so. Not really all that well. Taking a look at the alternate hand parts, again, with the chains and shackles, these are very nice. We have one set of grabbing hands, so this way he can go out and make it look like he's getting ready to choke someone, which Frankenstein is known for. And to use those shackles, you just got to pop the hands off, put the cuffs on the forearms, put the hands back on, you're good to go. The other alternate hand parts, so this way you can hold the flowers. One hand is to hold one flower, one hand is to hold two. Bada bing, bada boom, we're good and done. The paint applications here, I haven't really seen a lot of these with messed up paint apps, but do note that for the colored version, for the center of the flower, I have seen that yellow paint app on the color version all the way up on the petals. So this is something to just keep in mind when you're making your purchase. So all in all for Frankenstein, rather light, I might say, on accessories. Not a whole lot going on here, but given the size and the price point, I guess it does all sort of fit together. One thing that I will say, though, is that I have heard that apparently we are going to be getting an accessory set of some kind coming soon for Frankenstein and Frankenstein's monster. So who knows? Maybe we'll get a table. Maybe we'll get a hallway or other stuff. Who knows? But if you are looking for other things such as maybe support stands or even effect parts, Frankenstein don't like fire, you know, I got videos to help you out. Now we'll go ahead and move right on over to a size comparison so you can see just how big this monster is. And as you can see, definitely he is going to tower over some of your other smaller figures in, let's say, the 112 scale and even the 110 scale, which this figure does loosely fit into. So if you're looking for just a big, intimidating Frankenstein, quite frankly, this is going to be the one to get. And as I sort of alluded to throughout this video, here is a side by side comparison with the colored version which was the first one to hit the market. Now, as you can see, again, there are differences, obviously, in the overall paint scheme, but also in the application in the respective areas. You can see that in some parts of the colored version, stuff is going to be reflective, where on the black and white version, it's kind of matte. You can see that there are actual intricate paint applications for the blood and stuff on the colored version, where on the black and white version, we don't really have that. So it is very interesting to see NECA's take on the black and white difference here, and it should be the same moving forward with other releases. Hopefully this will be a guide moving forward for more figures. So buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. Again, I do prefer the colored version of Frankenstein here, but to be honest, if you are interested in the black and white version, uh, this one is unique in its own right, and I'm not gonna take that away from you. I do think that this is rather fun, and I was surprised at the differences. Overall, though, I do think that it is not necessarily the better of the two, and if I had to pick one, just stick with the color version. This one, opportunity spoke, and I took it. So you get a review. All right, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and roll credits. 
Well, collectors, that brings us to the end of the video today, and I just wanted to take a second to thank you so much for watching. Now, you've heard a lot from me, I'd like to hear a little bit from you. Drop in the comments down below whether or not you liked it, you hated it, or maybe you were somewhere in between. I also want to take an extra second here for a nice, humongous thank you to all the patrons for SDR over the last month who have really helped the channel grow into what it can be today. So to all of you, two big thumbs up. Thank you very much. And now the end card should be popping up, which will give you a few clickable links, like maybe to subscribe or head on over to my Patreon, or some short URLs, like to my social media or to my Teespring store. There's also a video I hand selected for you, so if you want to watch another STR video, I hand selected some good content for you to watch, so definitely check out that video. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.